Salut, Pascal Moscato here. Welcome back in another video tutorial for Motion Builder. Uh, in today's video, I want to give you a quick introduction to constraint in Motion Builders. Um, I want to show you aim constraint, sometimes known as loquette constraint, and also the path constraint. It's also a good opportunity to see how to make uh, a weight switcher. So without any further ado, let's jump into it. The aim constraint, sometimes called the loquette constraint. What I want to do is make this cone look at this object right here. And to do that, I'm going to drop the aim constraint in the scene. If I drop the constraint on an object like this, I can already set this object to be the constraint or the source. I'm going to do that with the constraint object. And then I'm going to insert, press Alt, drag and drop in the aim at object one. And I'm going to hit zero to make sure there is no offset. Then I'm going to select the aim constraint, go in properties. And under the aim setting, I want to change this cone so that the tip of the cone is aiming at my cube. Um, to make sure I have the right angle, I'm going to click on the object, select local. So it's the Y axis at, that I'm going to change. So back here, I wanted this value representing the Y axis to be at one and this one at zero. I also want to change the up vector. I don't want the y, the y axis to be the up vector. I'm going to change it to the x axis. So now it looks like this. Y pointing there and x pointing up. So now if I move this object, it follows well. If I move this object, it follows well. Excellent. I'm going to add now this object here. And as you can see, it's pointing exactly in the middle of the two. Uh, remember, we look at it a little bit earlier. You can use weight to change that. So I can have this object pointing there and then eventually with animation. Um, so in the example, I'm going to key here and then at 30, I'm going to key the other way around. So now my animation is coming is going from this cube to the other cube. This is a very convenient way for animators to work. Uh, here's a quick recommendation I can do um, is let's let's start with uh, creating a relation constraint and insert the aim constraint here as a receiver. We want to change the weight here. On the cone, I'm going to go into properties, editor, custom properties, look at cone and add a number. Then I'm going to click on the little A button to make it accessible to the um, uh, relation constraint. I'm going to click on the cone, add drag and drop as a sender. And my custom property I just created is right there. I'm going to click and connect with uh, the cube one weight. And I am gonna create a quick math process so that the weight of the two cubes is always equals to 100. To do that, I'm gonna use the multiplier node and the add node. Take my number, multiply it by minus one take the result and add 100 and connect that to the weight. So now on the cone object, if I go down in the custom properties tab, my newly created property here, if I move this slider, it's moving my weights of the constraint. Now let's do a path constraint. A path constraint, uh, sometimes known as a follow curve, is uh, taking this cone and make it follow this plane right here. So to do that, I'm going to create the path constraint, drop it on my cone, use that constraint and select my curve, press Alt, drag and drop as path source. When I'm going to hit uh, active, it's going to create 
an animation. So let's activate this. And here I have the animation. The cone is following the path until the end of my timeline. And the animation is stored inside the constraint itself. To find it, click on path, properties. Under the path setting tab, there's a wrap property. This is the animation of the cone. So frame zero, it equals zero here. And at 150, the wrap is at 100, 100%. You can see here there's a warp mode. It's set to percent. You can use segment. In this case, I only have one segment. A segment is the line between two points. If you have multiple points, you can say, okay, I'm gonna use the first two segment and animate that. There's a, a very cool option here called follow path. And that will simply uh, use rotation on your object. Again, I'm going to use the Y axis in this case. So I'm going to change the front vector to Y and the up vector to X. So as my cone is moving on the path, it follows the rotation too. And that's it for today's video. Uh, let me know if you have any question or comment. Uh, if you like this content, please leave a thumbs up or share with a friend, or both. And I'll, as always, I'll see you in the next one. Bye, prochaine.